continuing with our Pasco people in place, I'd like to introduce you to our new Director of Emergency Services, Chief Scott Casson. Now, Chief, uh, you come here uh, following someone who's been in your turnout gear or the turnout gear for a long time and had Chief on his helmet for a little bit. So talk about how it is stepping into that kind of a role. Uh, yes, thank you, Ed. Uh, it is a very big role to fill, of course, uh, very big shoes. Uh, Chief Lapinto was here for quite some time, you know, 35 years in all, uh, with the last 12 of those years being the fire chief in Pasco County. Um, and over the last almost a year or so of working with Chief Lapinto, he groomed his entire senior staff to eventually take over when he stepped out. So uh, I admire him for that because he, he was able to uh, teach us a lot uh, in that one year. And, uh, you know, Pasco County uh, owes a, a big thank you to him because of everything that he's done from, you know, day one um, up until the day he left. Chief, let's talk a little bit about your experiences in coming down to Florida from the Great White North. Yes, I, uh, I had talked to my wife quite a bit about it because I had um, spent 24 years with the, with the same department and I was young enough that where I could work another uh, career and we chose to come to Florida because couple of reasons. One, it was always my passion to live in Florida, and two, uh, her family lives here, so we figured this was a good time to do it. Now, I spent, like I said, 24 years up there. I had worked in just about every facet of the fire service, starting way back at the beginning of my career as a volunteer firefighter, and then a, a part-time firefighter, and eventually a, a career uh, firefighter. And of my career time there, I spent most of it in a management role, so that's where um, I had the advantage coming uh, to Pasco County. Um, and that's one of the things that they looked at when I applied for the uh, personnel chief job about a year ago here. Well, one of the unique things about Pasco County, I, I would believe from a, from a director of emergency services, is we have 720 square miles. How does that affect how you move your men around and your units are deployed and your fire stations? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a difficult scenario because it's constantly moving. You know, it's a giant uh, well-oiled machine and we're constantly having to adjust to the conditions that, that, we're, that we're dealt with. Of course, you know, on any given day, we respond to about 162 calls for help. So, and we do that out of uh, 23 fire stations. So it doesn't take long for uh, 23 fire stations to, be get, to get overwhelmed with you know, handling 162 calls in a 24 hour period. So we're, we're ha we have to be smart about the things that we do and how we deploy those resources. So we're very careful and making sure that you know if we send an ambulance out or two ambulances out in any given area that we are backfilling those ambulances. Same thing with fire crews. Uh, so you know we look at all of that when we're, we're uh, ha having to deal with our daily staffing. And we're a coastal county. Now you, you and your folks were instrumental in our last two little uh, weather events? Yes. Yeah, we uh, have recently in the last few months had two uh, tropical storms that, and, that had an impact here in Pasco County. The first, the first storm, uh, Debbie, uh, back in June, we were a little more reactive with, with that one, only because that storm kind of, uh, we were told you know, by the Weather Service folks that that storm wasn't gonna be as a big an impact that it ended up being. And fortunately, there wasn't really much of a wind event with that one, but we ended up having a lot of rain. As, as, as most people remember, we had uh, several days of, of nonstop rainfall, which uh, contributed to a lot of low-lying flooding uh, throughout the western parts of the county. So that's where we had to uh, kind of uh, uh, amass our resources and figure out how we're going to get a lot of those people that ended up being stranded in their homes because the water came up so quick. So we, we were scrambling for boats um, and some uh, uh, high profile vehicles and we were able to accommodate everybody and get them out of harm's way. Uh, the second storm, uh, which was Tropical Storm Isaac, uh, about a month later, we were able to be a little more proactive with that one because we knew a little bit uh, better with what we were dealing with with that particular storm. So we had all our resources in place and we were geared up for the, the worst uh, possible scenario. But fortunately, as it, as it turned out, uh, Isaac kind of skirted the coast and actually was going away from us faster than it was coming toward us. So Now you mentioned high profile vehicles. Yes. The, the trucks behind us are kind of your normal fire trucks, but a higher profile vehicle is further up off of the ground. Yes. So then you can use it to move people out or... Exactly, yeah. The, uh, what I'm referring to uh, specifically is our brush trucks. Uh, we have one over here in the corner of the bay, but it's a, it's a lower profile. We have several of the high profile brush trucks, which you're right, it stands much higher off the, off the roadway and has much clear, higher clearance, so we're able to go through you know, deep bodies of water. And that's what we were using to you know, actually go right up to uh, homes and get people off of their front porches and, and take them to higher ground. So that's a big piece of equipment. Now, Penny for Pasco, 
How has the penny helped you outfit your trucks in other ways or influence the decisions and the services that your department can provide to the citizens? Well, largely uh, the, the biggest uh, contributor of the penny for Pasco for uh, the fire service are the uh, many of the trucks that we use today, uh, specifically even this one right behind us. Um, also our fire stations, that's an, another big component. Currently right now we are uh, rebuilding three of our uh, stations that we operate out of because they're older, uh, they're not hurricane uh, resistant, and they're, you know, since they are older, they're not um, up to par with a lot of the amenities that we expect in a modern fire station. So those are a couple of the big projects that, that we use. Now one of the things that when you hear uh, emergency services providing this and providing that, one of the things that you guys test yourself by is how fast your response time is to get to any given location. How is the penny going to help you make a difference there and get to scenes faster? Well, one of the, the, uh, the biggest things that we're working on right now is what we call our mobile data project. And what that essentially is going to allow us to do is put a uh, laptop computer, a ruggedized laptop computer in the front of every frontline apparatus. And what that's going to allow them to do is a couple things. One, it's going to allow voiceless communication. And what that means is we're not going to have to get on the actual walkie-talkie radio and tell dispatch that we are responding on the scene. We'll simply now be able to push a button. All right, so that's going to free up a lot of, of radio traffic that we hear on the radio, which is going to improve our efficiency right there. The second and probably most important thing will be the ability to map the, the call. And this is where uh, it's going to make our response times a little bit quicker because now instead of when we get a call, we have to jump up in the truck and we have to flip through map pages, lots of map pages by hand, and actually locate the call and figure out how to get there. Now, fortunately, most people know their first two areas, but there are some times where you just don't know where it's at and you're trying to find it. Where the computerized system will allow, will allow the, uh, a, very similar to what a GPS system or a MapQuest type map will allow, and it'll be a point A and a point B. The point A being where you're at right now on the truck and point B being the call. So we'll instantly be able to start rolling right out the door as soon as we get the call, it'll be up there on the screen. So those are a couple of the big things uh, that the new computer system will allow us to do. Now, just so you know, there is method to our madness because October 7th through 13th is Fire Prevention Month or Fire Prevention Week. So we're not just here by coincidence. So talk a little bit about the new slogan, no two ways out. Correct. No two ways out. And the, the, the basic premise of that message is, is no two ways out of any, any structure that you're currently in. So if you're at home, you should always know two ways out of any particular room that you're in. And same thing when you go out to the store, you go to the movie theater. Uh, you know, everybody always wants to come out the door that they came in, which in a fire situation might not be the only way out. So you, or maybe the only way out, you have to find another, a secondary means of egress. So that's the main premise of this year's campaign. So it's kind of a unique little twist, no two ways out. Correct, no two ways out. Well, Chief, thank you and welcome on board. And we look for 35 years of service from you. <laughs> All right, thank you, Heather. Appreciate